He's just a really special guy. You have to meet him and just have a two minute conversation with him. You know, he's young. He's never asked me why him, why did he get this incurable disease? And he never complains. You know, he'll admit if he's in pain and he will tell me the truth when asked, but he really takes everything in stride. This is the story of Tim Cooper, a 56-year-old black man with multiple myeloma, a rare, incurable blood cancer. Tim, a bright light, a man of faith, is documenting his experience to help others. October 22nd, November 21st, get away for another week. And here's the thing about Tim. He brings a far more upbeat, philosophical outlook to a situation than most of us could muster. I'm no prophet, I'm no great individual in the sense that I'm an average guy, but I think I've been placed in an extraordinary situation that I was meant to deal with. You know, why not me? And so hopefully whatever I can share with you can help you to move through this process and deal with it and take it one day at a time. I'm Gina DiPietro, your host, here with part two of the Tim Cooper story on Novant Health Healthy Headlines. Before he'd meet his oncologist, the physician we heard from at the beginning of this episode, Tim went in search of answers about that worsening pain in his neck and back. A neurological examination followed by imaging immediately concerned the experts at Novant Health Spine Specialists in Charlotte. It showed a broken bone in Tim's neck. Based on its location and the way in which it fractured, they knew it was a side effect of cancer. That news would be delivered by neurosurgeon Dr. John Barry Condelario, who specializes in oncology. I typically start the conversation with something along the lines of, what I'm about to tell you is gonna sound devastating, but what you should know is that there, we will be here with you every step of the way and letting the patient know that it's hand in hand. We're taking this plunge into this diagnosis together it can be quite powerful. Do you remember how Tim reacted? He started crying, if I recall. It was a devastating diagnosis to feel like he was taking on, much in part due to the fact, as you probably know from his story, is that he has family members with cancer. His mother has myeloma, and so he had spent so much of his life kind of developing and becoming the person that he was and wasn't expecting to have that diagnosis at any point. And that's the sucky thing about cancer is that it can touch all of us in any way at any time. You know, still learning about it, you know, still processing it in my head, obviously, and I'm like, I have cancer. So that's kind of what I'm still going through now, that process, figuring it out. It's one day at a time. Myeloma bone disease, a side effect of Tim's cancer, had thinned and weakened the lower part of his neck in an area called the cervical spine. You see that picture right there? So that picture is a picture of uh, the spine. It has mm -hmm. these little spongy things called discs. Tim's needed repaired, or doctors warned, he'd become paralyzed from the neck down. The first of two surgeries would happen the next day at Novant Health Presbyterian Medical Center in Charlotte. As Tim was in the operating room getting prepped for surgery, Dr. Barry Condelario made a tense moment just a little lighter by finding something they had in common, a love of music. Jazz in particular. He and I connected because of that and we were talking about a particular song that was covered by Quincy Jones, but was originally sung by Herbie Hancock, or produced and written by Herbie Hancock. And so we actually played that particular song as Tim drifted off to sleep under anesthesia. If you're curious, that song, it's called Tell Me a Bedtime Story. For Dr. Barry Condelario, connecting with patients is about the human experience. As someone who had seizures growing up, he knows what it's like to be the one seeking answers. It helps you to really understand the anxiety, the frustration, the denial, and hopefully the acceptance that can come 
from working with a provider and finding out the diagnosis, but then finding the tools and strategies for how to overcome it. And my role, Dr. Croft and others who are helping to support Tim, I think understand that, that we have to be part of that human experience in order for us to really help that person to get to where they want to be. And sometimes, it turns out, especially with cancer, that doesn't always mean beating the diagnosis. It just means helping that patient find the dignity to take on that diagnosis. Once Tim was under anesthesia, Dr. Barry Condelario used screws attached with rods to strengthen the back of the neck. And later, in a second surgery, used a plating system to stabilize the front of Tim's neck. He started documenting his progress soon after. All right, today is September 4th. And as you listen to his video diaries, you'll notice the surgery temporarily affected the sound of his voice. His sense of humor, however, that was fully intact. I wanted to also show you what I'm also wearing here to help rejuvenate the screws to my bones in my neck. It's called a bone stimulator on the Bionic Man. We have the technology. So if you know that show, The Bionic Man, I'm sorry my age, you know what I'm talking about. A tissue sample taken at surgery was examined by a pathologist and confirmed what type of cancer Tim was dealing with, multiple myeloma. Now doctors could begin treating the cancer itself. I'm doing great, how are you doing? I am doing well. Tim would meet his oncologist, Dr. Patricia Kropf of Novon Health Cancer Institute in Charlotte. He came in in all kinds of metal devices, a halo, different braces, and he was smiling. He was smiling and he said, you know, I have myeloma, what are we gonna do? And he's been like that with each visit. An estimated 34,000 Americans are diagnosed with myeloma each year. That accounts for less than 2% of new cancer cases in the US. It forms in a type of white blood cell called a plasma cell. And it's a fairly aggressive type of blood disorder. It tends to involve the bones, the kidneys, it can develop into an anemia. So at present, myeloma remains incurable. It's very treatable, but it remains incurable. And patients tend to be on some type of therapy for most of their lives. She recommended a combination of chemotherapy and radiation for Tim. It's 2.30. I'm in the hospital now waiting for my Velcade shot, getting my treatment every Monday and Thursday. Today is September 23rd. They did say you have, maybe have a little bit of a metallic taste in your mouth, and I do uh, sense that. It's 9 a.m. I've been running a slight temperature for the last couple of days. Feeling much better today, no temperature. In the lead up to cellular therapy, a more targeted approach that uses a person's own cells to fight cancer. Just finished my morning walk. And why well, I felt good, and it had me thinking about just my purpose and what I'm going through. They always say that God wouldn't give you more than you can carry, but it really is true if you apply that and use it as fuel towards your next phase. Where will God lead you once you get through this valley? It takes resilience to walk down the road that Tim has found himself on, and he has a quiet strength. I think Tim shows and has continued to show an indomitable spirit. He's an impressive individual. I'm proud to call him my patient. And I tell him every time I see him that I'm truly privileged to be a part of his care. I love Tim. And the entire office loves Tim. He just has such a beautiful outlook on life. He takes everything in stride. He's really just a pleasure to take care of. All of the nurses, my colleagues, we all feel the same. It's worth pausing here to explain how he came to be featured in this story. Good afternoon, young lady. Hi, Tim. How are you? I am good. I'm good. Just sitting up having good coffee and some, some jazz music. As a senior PR specialist, I'm part of a storytelling team that captures the care and culture at Novant Health. And we're lucky to meet a lot of patients whose lives our providers have touched. After my colleague, Josh Jarman, another senior team member, met Tim, he came back to us and said, his story has the power to help people. You have to meet this guy. 
And as you've probably guessed, it's how we find ourselves here today. I know Josh, he told me, he's like, I'm gonna hand you off to Gina now. In the years since I've known Tim, here's what I've come to understand. He has a calming presence. It makes him easy to be around, even after a disappointing setback. You wanna keep this persona image that everything is fine. And for most days, you know, for a lot of days it is, but some days it's not. And I thought it was important to share those times too, because that's a part of the journey, right? There are days that I'm like, what the hell? And then you can say, look, I can't live in that fear. A big event, like a cancer diagnosis, seems to unleash something in people. And as Tim and I continued to chat that day, his self-reflection grew deeper. I've always been a person that has had abilities to do things, but never pushed myself hard enough to really achieve what I wanted, Gina. And that's one of the regrets that I have in life. And this has taught me now, I get challenging myself to do more. So seeing this happening to me now has really given me a perspective on how I've been BSing in some ways. You know, and get, I've always been to succeed and do well and make good money, but I've never pushed myself to the ability that I really should have. But that's my military career, from when I was a student, so now. So there's so much more that I'm capable of. And I think that getting through this process, when I do get through this, see a lot of the tunnel and get there, you know, it's gonna really jumpstart me into something new. Tim's self-reflection got me thinking. He's a man of faith. He trusts in divine intervention. He's patient, he's funny, he loves to laugh. But above all, I think it's his selflessness that sets him apart. My parents are both 80. They're declining as far as their ability to do certain things. But uh, I'm over there just about every weekend now in order to help out, you know, around the house. I want to give my sister a break because she's there during the week. She lives in Winston-Salem. While he's found this process to be somewhat cathartic, Tim isn't doing this for Tim but for you, the listener. I'm just thankful to do this as well. And I'm glad you've been entrusted with telling, you know, my story, whoever it helps. Hopefully if it helps one person, you know, that's great. I'm just kind of still, you know, amazed by that. So thank you again. Still ahead, Tim climbs perhaps his toughest hill yet a stem cell transplant, and the next part of his treatment plan that Dr. Kropp said is the standard of care for younger people with multiple myeloma. Everything is coming back positive as far as my stem cell counts and all of my blood work and the way my system has been adjusting to the chemo that I've done previously to get ready for this process. So I'm really anxious to get it done and move past it and, and have these 14 to 16 days turn out and I'll be hopefully in remission. I'm Gina DiPietro, your host, and I'm humbled to tell Tim's story. If you enjoyed this podcast, leave us a five-star review or share it with friends. Find us on Apple, Google, Spotify, or just about anywhere you listen to podcasts. And leave Tim a note of encouragement. You'll find his story under Editor's Picks on www.healthyheadlines.org or use the search feature to type in his name. People can join the discussion at the end of that article, and Tim's responded to many of the comments already. Thanks for listening.